If I'm doing these reps where I'm like, and you know, nothing wrong with this. Like there's nothing wrong at all with this. This is actually pretty controlled. But if I'm a beginner or if I'm really trying to connect, if I have an issue connecting with my chest, I'm not gonna remember too much other than like, hey man, get my arms up and down and that's about it, right? And I will feel a pump 100%, but I only really feel the pump from just moving this thing up and down, not really knowing why or how I created the pump. What is up, it's your boy Johnny Shrevive, BB Pro, Mr. Tell Like It Is. Welcome back to the episode of Train With Me. Today I'm gonna to talk about getting the most out of your chest press machine. I'm on the incline machine, but regardless, we can take these cues and we can apply them to the other pressing machines as well. So guys, I'm gonna cover range of motion, time and attention, and all contractions, so you guys can get a better connection with your chest and also get a big chest too. So without further ado guys, keep your eyes glued to the screen, your ears glued to the speakers, and let's learn some shit. Okay guys, we're gonna break it down right from floor to core. From toes to fingertips. I want you guys to get connected with this machine. Now, um, in a incline machine, but we can definitely apply these cues to other pressing machines as well too. It's a little bit of a foreshadowing to the video series I'm gonna do basically on chest pressing, regardless. Anyway, what we wanna do is, number one, I wanna go over range of motion. Now, getting the best out of this machine, being a machine's benefits is, you know, you don't have to have a spotter, you're a little more safer, and you can push a little bit more in terms of like, to failure. Right? Now, you don't have to push the fill over time, but if you can't get the weight up, guess what? It just doesn't come up, right? Great. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna optimize ourselves in this machine. So we wanna make sure we set ourselves up for success within our body posture before we actually do press the actual weight. So what I mean by that is, guys, remember forward to core, make sure we're in the seat. We don't want our feet all the way out here or doing weird shit, right? We wanna be connected right from the ground. Like, I want you to feel the ground. Like, right, I made this cue before. If I get my feet, you know, if I'm sitting like almost like a, a squat, I should be able to stand up and sit back down, right? Very good positioning. And then when I'm down, really, if I'm pressing from the ground, I'm actually like pushing myself up a bit, but I'm not necessarily pushing myself up because the weight's gonna stop me. Then you get this nice pressing from the ground. Like, you know, you can press yourself on the ground and then connect and all the way through. Now, to put this thing all together, we want is, you know, feet, put shoulders apart, have a good, little, you know, have a good angle. You know, maybe your, your heels tucked a little bit underneath your hips a bit, not too far, but just connect to the ground. If you're too short, get a plate or some kind of riser. Now, it's very important that we set ourselves up for success here. Now, as you can see, my bench, uh, my seat is pretty low. If I get back like this right away, there's a no time under tension or any tension at all with this. It's too low, it's too high. Right, so we want to adjust it. But again, how high do we adjust it? Before we adjust this, what the point of this is to get the full stretch and then the full contraction at the top, right? All the way down, but we want the stretch at the bottom to be great. That's why we're utilizing the machine press because you can put yourself in position to be able to maximize the stretch without worrying about your safety in a sense. So now we're here. I want to pull this thing up a bit. How high do I pull this? Well, I'll go and I'll exaggerate. Here go, I'm at my top. This is ridiculous. This is too high. I don't want to be here. Then, you know, just, you know, it's being, it's just, just exaggerating, right? We don't want to be this high. But we want to be high enough that as soon as we load the weight, there's tension here at the bottom of my range. There's a full, there's full tension. And then a little bit lower, I could put this thing down. But here, I'm really stretched. I'm going to go over body posture to get more out of the stretch at the bottom of this lift. So I'm in a place here. I'm set and I'm here and I'm pressing up. So from here, we're placed, we're in, our glutes are kind of engaged, right? I'm aware that there I'm pushing from my legs. My shoulders are back and away from my ears. Now, we don't wanna like extremely pinch our shoulder blades. That's like a cue, an old school cue of like pinching your shoulder blades together like this. It's not bad, but it's gonna, it's gonna really restrict your range of motion in terms of like how you really push out because you have this kind of weird push where everything kind of ends up like this, right? So we wanna, shoulders back away from your ears and feeling a little bit of like a, you should feel a little bit of sensation in the mid part of your back, like, like right here. So I'm like this. I don't wanna feel it all the way up here. I wanna feel like right here when I'm back. Hey guys, check it out. This exercise is in my ebook. It's in my Push Pull Legs ebook. So guys, take these cues, apply them to my ebook and get it right now. That's it. <laughs> Just get it. So again, from here in shoulders back away from my ears, right? My lats are engaged now. Again, guys, we're gonna talk fists, wrists, and elbows, stacking the joint, right? We wanna make sure it's underneath. So we're pressing, everything's aligned, right? So underneath, and then while we're here, we wanna engage our core still. We don't want it to be this big, huge arch like this. 
and then this isn't active. Remember, when we're talking about engaging the core, what I mean by engaging the core is not like doing this and trying to suck it in. I'm right engaging the core. So my chest is up, but I've engaged my core. Now, if I'm in this position, I'm doing that, especially when I'm actually pressing, and I'll leave my shirt like this. Cue the slow music. I should put some, well, just some lotion on here. I think it's ashy. So when I'm pressing, my stomach should look more so like, like this, not like this, right? You can see everything's basically on my lower back, not pushing through here. So when I say engage the core, I mean, pretend one of your buddies or one of those buddies are gonna come by and just elbow drop you on the stomach. I mean, and elbow drop is the jab. Either way, you would tense for a jab, you brace for a jab, you wouldn't suck in, right? So reason we wanna be like this is now that we're in our, our lowest range from here, once I get myself, my elbows underneath, the weight starts to come up. And then from here, breath is in, and then pressing all the way up. Your range of motion is fully contracted here because at the top, we can really squeeze the weight and then all the way down, riding it down. And then once you get to the bottom, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a deep breath in, expand that chest again. When I'm expanding my chest, I'm taking a deep breath in, two. So I'm here, breath comes in. And then once I'm at that, I stretch, I'm gonna push into my core to push up. Squeezing at the top, controlling it down, and then big breath, and then Don't try to blow all your air out at once. Don't get here and then go and Then you're just like you're, You got nothing left, right? So when you stay there, you're down. Listen to my breathing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna exaggerate the, my breathing a little bit. So I'm here, it's, you know, 1,001. All the way down, coming and then opening the chest up, expanding. When I'm expanding, at the bottom I lift, when I'm over my chest, I'm driving my feet into the ground. <sighs> I'm connected from the ground. I'm actually pushing from here on the way down. I'm lowering the weight, not only with my chest, but my legs are almost feeling like they're active, helping me stabilize on the way down. And then when that big stretch is here, <sighs> pushing straight up. That's your full range of motion, right? We want a great stretch and then full contract to the top. Hey guys, check it out. A lot of you guys are watching the video, but you're not subscribed. So do your boy a favor and subscribe to the channel. Also hit that post notification button as well too. So next time I put a video, it'll be the first ones to get it. Hopefully by now you guys like the show. So if you like the show, hit the like button. Back to the show. Now let's talk about time and attention. We've been talking most default straight sets for a long time. And I've thrown in some like mile match, some mile rep match stuff with Dr. Mike, some rest pause things. But in terms of like playing with the range of motion, basically we wanna like slow down the rep as much as we can, especially for you beginners, right? What it's gonna do is you're gonna to have to lower the weight no matter what, because it's the time or attention is gonna to be too great for you to try to load the weight up. But I'll give you an analogy. You're walking down the street and someone just runs past really quick. It's like, boom, say, hey, what's going, on? what's going on, buddy? And just runs by and you're like, Ugh, who's that? And you're like, you don't know, but you probably caught the person. You're like, you probably say like, you know, maybe know what color they're wearing, I don't know. You're not gonna really remember much, but someone's running by you and calling your name. Same person this time, stops by for and talks to you for a minute, then leaves. How much will you remember from the conversation for a minute or the person runs by you really fast? Think of that as time and attention. Your time under tension is you and your muscle, your, your brain and your muscles having a good conversation, remembering what it feels like to lower the weight and then to stretch and then to contract at the top. If I'm doing these reps where I'm like, and nothing wrong with this. Like there's nothing wrong at all with this. This is actually pretty controlled. But if I'm a beginner or if I'm really trying to connect, if I have an issue connecting with my chest, I'm not gonna remember too much other than like, hey man, get my arms up and down and that's about it, right? And I will feel a pump 100%, but I only really feel the pump from just moving this thing up and down, not really knowing why or how I created the pump. And the time and attention is gonna give you guys ability to feel the rep more, feel the muscle more, and the time and attention just makes the rep harder. Before we progressive overload with the weight, progressive overload with time and attention. So if you've done like, I don't know, 10 to 100 pounds at whatever amount of, 100 pounds at 10 set, at 10 reps, and that's what you're good with that, I don't know, on the bench or whatever. And then you're like, all right, I'm gonna add weight. No, no, don't add weight. Slow the rep down and make it that much harder. 
So going from there, it's gonna roll into the actual contractions and understanding contractions, how it's gonna benefit you the most. Now, we've talked about our range of motion and our eccentric loads. Like we've talked about the negative mostly, right? For the most part, we're really controlling negative. If we're looking at set intensifiers, a long negative is like the, is very common, right? What we wanna do is play with those ranges of motion and play with those different contractions. So for you guys who are there, this will be a negative or a eccentric contraction the lowering of the weight. The pause at the bottom is an isometric contraction or a stretch at the bottom, it's a hold. And then we have a concentric contraction, then we have an isometric contraction at the top, the peak of the contraction. So the top of a press, this would be the peak isometric contraction at the top of the lift. If it was a pull, it would be at the bottom me being here, right? So we've paid attention or we've done more of a negative and then Press, which is great. This is like our default, beginners. Great, two second th negative, three second negative, thousand one, thousand two, press and back down, great. What we're gonna do is we're gonna play with some of the range of motion and some of those contractions. So what we're gonna do is instead of the regular 1001, 1002, 1003 and press or 1001, 1002, press, what we're gonna do is 1001, 1002, 1000 and then we're gonna hold two, Press 1001, 1001, 1002, open up, stretch it, right? And then we're gonna squeeze at the top and down, right? So you can change whatever parts of the contraction you wanna slow down to make the rep that much harder. We can do a two second negative, 1001, 1002, pause, 1001, 1002, pause, 1001, 1002, pause, 1001, 1000, right? So trying to do those, would make the set that much harder. And what we're doing with this is, is taking this machine and, give, and using it to be able to always sustain your full range of motion. The full peak is at the top, squeeze, like at the top, I'm squeezing this thing together. I'm trying to pull these handles in. And on the way down, I'm riding it down, I'm stretching and then with speed and squeezing, push myself into the ground, right? That's my full range. The full range, all the bottom, all the way stretch, a slight pause and then a good, speed at the top, squeeze the, bot, squeeze the top, fully locked out. Not necessarily locking the elbows, but I'm pushing this weight like this. At the top of this, I'm pulling this in so I'm really getting the full adduction from my chest. And then basically from here all the way down, press. So let me throw some weight on here real quick. You know, like, you know, like Johnny, there's no weight on this thing. So right from the beginning, floor to core, stepping inside here, sitting down, adjust our feet so we're comfortable. Set up, planted, sitting back, shoulders back and away from your ears, pushing down. Then getting those hands underneath, making sure those fists, wrists and elbows. Underneath, causing tension right away. I can feel, my, as soon as I get my elbows underneath, as soon as I'm stacked, I can feel. Right in my palms here, I can feel my chest already engaged. Pressing up. <sighs> Right, squeeze on the top, then letting those elbows break, riding the weight down, feel my legs pressing into the floor, my core is engaged, big breath in, expanding chest, and then right back down, two, open up, thousand one, thousand two, big open stretch, thousand one, thousand two, big open, and down. Take time to slow your reps completely down. If you're having trouble feeling the weight, you're probably, made, you're probably moving way too fast for your brain to really connect with your muscle. Slow down that conversation. Enjoy those 50 seconds of absolute burn in the chest. That's what's needed for your chest to grow, right? Time and attention, free range of motion, and set yourself up for success ahead of time will give you a better overall set. Anyway, guys, if you guys use any of these cues, let me know in the comment section below. And hey guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and share. You know, become what the telekit is, transparent, vulnerable truth. And for coaching, johnashew.com. Guys, book yourself a 30-minute consult. At the end of the consult, I ducked off any package that you pick. And also, hit the description below for those discount codes and promo codes to help save your life or change your life for the better. Use my code Johnny for 10% off, bluesidenutraceuticals.com. Anyway, guys, I'll be on TikTok, Instagram, and Snapchat. Send your progress pics, your training pics, and your video clips, and I'll repost it for you, because you know how it is. Iron sharp is iron. Progressive overload your life. In the meantime, keep dream chasing. Peace.